Alright, today we're going to start our tank series. And we're going to start it on the M4 Easy 8 Sherman tank. And that's right, it's a tank. So, got the door closed because it's cold outside. But you know, that's a tank. Sloping armor up front. Uh, so you can get an idea of thickness right here a little bit. This is my finger. So your thickness is basically from here to here. Maybe a little thicker because it does like, you know, dives in a little bit. So from here to here is roughly two and a half inches. Now when you slope the armor, you artificially increase the uh, thickness of it. So it's actually with the sloping effect, you get about two and a half, three inches. Now also the sloping effect you know, helps rounds hopefully bounce off. That's what they got in front. On the sides, flat as hell. Why that is, I have no idea. Tracks, suspension, bunch of stuff I really don't know much about, to be honest with you. There's your turret. Now, look at the turret, it's cast, but look how nice and clean it is. You can see where they cleaned up the marks, the, the flu marks or whatever they have over right there. That's a little porthole for firing a, I'm sure it has a better name than porthole, but I don't know what it is. You fire your 45 out of it. What we do is we use it to load ammo, the big gun ammo in and out of. Spare track. This would be the back of the tank. Just a little better picture of that. That's a moth. We got some accoutrement on here, which basically means stuff. You can see the 50 cal up there. Up there is 1919 as well. We actually have three 1919s on this particular tank. We have the hull 1919, the coaxial 1919, and a commander's 1919. From what I understand, the commander's 1919 wasn't actually a factory thing. It was actually installed in the field because the commander said, hey man, I want a gun too. So, they gave him a gun. So, there's the outside. I'm going to cruise on up and we'll take a look at the inside. Okay, I wanted to backtrack a little bit. Before we got in the tank, here's the top part of the tank. Top portion of the turret. This is actually where you store another 50 cow barrel. Ass end. Front end. Another mount. This is over the engine bay right here new shoes, Vasque or Vasque or however you pronounce them, awesome, awesome shoes, so anyway, good for tank climbing, uh, you know, fuel and other stuff, uh, just stuff, right there, that little portion is sloped, so if you actually step on it and you're not ready for it, you'll slide off the tank, which brings me to this, if you're on a tank, be real slow with everything you do. Because if you go fast and you slip, guess what gives? Not the tank. Okay, in the turret, this is actually the 76 millimeter gun. Live, breech block, breech ring. Breech block is in there, breech ring is a big part. You can operate the turret with this, or rather the gun with this. This is your elevation. This is sight, by the way, that's kind of cool. Let's see if I can get something in there. Yeah, you can see it. So cool. That is how you uh, do azimuth, or slowing, or whatever you want to call it on the turret. Uh, firing controls. This right here is uh, where you how you know where your turret's pointed. Because if you're in here locked up, you don't get to see much. And it's relative to where you're driving. It's kind of weird. Some comm stuff. 45 stowage. Um, well, basically, he's a turret operator, his seat. And grenade stowage, turret lock, commander seat, right above this big old access hole that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> Radio stuff. And then over there is the loader. We're going to him here in just a second. Let's see if we can look through here. No. Well, you get the idea. More in a second. Okay, 
This is the loader's area. Under here, under these bales, is your ammo stowage canteen. So just in case you don't know what it is, there's a sign. Driver's area, the extra haul guy. I'm not sure what what he does besides man that machine gun. So but he's just handy to have. He's a friendly guy, tags along. Uh, more canteens. This is the Coax 1919. The big gun, 76 high velocity gun, breech block, breech ring. This cage is basically so you don't get killed when the thing recoils. There's your gun stowage. I was talking about that a little while ago. It's right there. Um, all right, now firing. You notice this little setup right here. We fire the gun from a lanyard pulled out there, out this porthole thing. Now the reason we do that. Let's see if I can get me on there. The reason we do that is for a couple of reasons. One, safety. Uh, you know, safety's first. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the other thing is, if you've ever fired a tank from the inside, it's pretty boring. It really is. Loud boom, some smoke, and your gun goes back. But that's it. I mean, there's nothing else, nothing else there. You don't see what you hit. You don't do anything like that. So what we do... Just pull the lanyard so you can, with the muzzle brake on, you really feel it. Really, oh, look, I didn't notice that. Check back here. With the muzzle brake on, you really feel it. You get a you get a good solid boom out of it. It's pretty cool. And you can actually see the impact. So it's pretty neat. It, we, we prefer to do it that way. We found customers prefer to do it that way as well. So, more here in a second. All right, starting on the... <laughs> I don't even know what this guy's name is. Hall Gunner, I guess. He just hangs out there with some ammo and a machine gun. Uh, pretty low stress job, I'd guess. And as much as you're driving in a tank, you know. Coax 1919, transmission. It's large. Extra periscopes. Let's see, okay, this one's got the cover on it, but there's a periscope right there. What I'm in right now is the driver's area. And I got a seat belt up my butt. Hold up a second. There we go. Alright, so I'm in the driver's area. This is how you control a Sherman tank. That's uh, forward, left, and right, and reverse. Well, not reverse. Well, yeah, it's a reverse once you shift. So it's all right here. Let me show you your dashboard here. There it is. And that is it. Now you have the master. If you hear me straining, because I have to do all kinds of weird calisthenics to get the shots here. The lights, red and white. You'll notice the inside of this tank is white. That's because when you button up, it gets real dark real quick. So a little bit of light goes a long way in white light. Now, you notice while I'm sitting, this is my forward view. Yep, I can't see out. You can adjust the seat up and down, but realistically, if you're buttoned up, that's your only view to the outside world. That's nuts, man. There's not a lot there. You can't see left. You can't see right. You can see whatever field of view is coming out of that periscope, and that is it. Um, and you listen to the other guys behind you say, hey, stop. There's a dog there, a turtle. Don't run over the turtle. There's a, there's a comm box. Um, this is actually a little up lower, kind of like an air conditioner. It's kind of nice. Um, and that is it. That is the inside of a Sherman tank, basically. There's not a lot else to it. Let me get up out of here. This is the main gun right here. This is the front of the tank. There's the whole it's our little tanker guy display. And in case you're wondering like how close this is, you know, you're like, man, I'm standing outside the tank. Here's the turret. <laughs> There's the where is it? There's the whole machine gun. Pretty much right behind my head, so it pays to pay attention to everybody in the tank when you're in the tank. So, let's see, turn around. That's it, kids. Sherman Tank. I'll do a, maybe a T-34 or something next. See you later.